I want to carry on from uh, where Lisa left us last week. So if you were here last week or if you've listened to it online, um, she gave us some observations on Genesis 3, where the serpent asked Eve, did God really say? And although Eve knew exactly what God had said and, and even quoted it back to the serpent, she chose to disobey. Then Lisa went on to read some other scriptures of, of what God said throughout his word. And you know, it's easy for us, isn't it, to roll our eyes and go, oh, well, it was really clear what God was saying. And, and even Adam should have obeyed God and then we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in today, in the suffering in this fallen world. But before we start pointing the finger, we might want to look at ourselves. I want to ask a question before I go into the word. Um, I just want you to just put your hand up if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ this morning. Okay, if you're a disciple, excellent. So I'm talking to the right people, just wanted to check, perfect. So Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And if you read the, the same uh, commission in Mark, so Mark 16 and verse 15, it says, and he told them, Jesus told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. I'm not sure if that's real or metaphoric. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't harm them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. What? Did Jesus really say that? <laughs> he did. And, and who was he talking to? Okay, who's a disciple of Jesus? Ah, not so many of you eager to put your hand up that time. So... How are you doing with that? How's, how's your week been? How, how many people? <laughs> yeah, Len says coffee time. So how many people have you preached the gospel to this week? How many demons have you cast out? How many people have you laid hands on because they're sick and seen them recover? I want to sit down now. <laughs> so there's two things that I want to pick up on from this. So firstly, Jesus said, go into all the world. Or if you read it in Mark, go and make disciples of all the nations. We're not going to make many new disciples sitting in church on a Sunday morning. It's, it's not going to happen. We, we do have people, obviously, that come in that are not yet disciples of Jesus, that, that, you know, don't have an understanding that may be, you know, not in that place where they would say, I believe. But if we want to see the world changed and we want to see the gospel of Jesus spread around, we're not going to do it by sitting here on a Sunday morning. Amen. 
So last week I mentioned at the beginning of worship that I'd been um, at a conference on Saturday and this question was put up and it's really impacted me and it said if the local church was to disappear would the community notice? That, that really kind of, you know, sometimes you hear something and it's like they've just slapped you around the face. But like that, do you remember that tango advert where the person takes a drink and this orange man comes out and whacks him around the face and runs off and then they just stand in there going, what, what happened there? That's how I felt on Saturday when I heard that statement. Would our community notice if we weren't here anymore? And I have to be honest, I think that there are parts of our community that really would notice if we weren't here. You know, those that we deliver food to would certainly notice if we weren't here. The, the mums that receive the baby goods that we collect once a month, they would certainly notice because there's such a need out there. You know, maybe the people that come to Open Life House, you know, I think they would notice if we weren't here anymore because, you know, it's become a lovely little uh, community here. You know, there are pockets within our community that would definitely notice if we weren't here. But I don't think it's enough. I think we've still got work to do. And I had to ask myself, would the community notice if I wasn't here anymore? You know, as I was looking at this, I was thinking, you know, what is, what is my spiritual carbon footprint? Get me? You know, how much am I affecting the environment that I'm living in? Do my neighbours know that I'm a Christian? Do they know that I believe in God? Do they know that Jesus has given me authority to preach the good news, to lay hands on the sick? Do they know? Some of them do. Not all of them, if I'm honest. So if we're wanting to be more like Jesus, we've got to look at what he did. In Matthew, there's around about 27 miracles including healings and supernatural occurrences like Jesus walking on the water, feeding over 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. I don't know if you've ever looked at this. How many of them were in the synagogue or the temple? I had to look at that. So I won't read all the scriptures because of time, but Matthew 4 and 23... Matthew 9 and 35, Matthew 12, 9 to 13, and Matthew 21, 14, all record Jesus healing the sick in the temple. Most of them are, you know, something along the lines of a many, many sick were brought to Jesus and he healed them all. Um, but there's only one that it, it goes into detail, and that's the man with the withered hand. So where were the rest of them done? You can talk to me. You are allowed. Where were the rest done? On the street. They, they were out. They were in the marketplace. They were in someone's house. They were on a mountainside. They were from a boat. They were not within the church. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus didn't heal him, that he did. You know, as people were brought to him, he healed them. But the majority of Jesus' ministry was outside in the community so where should we be going out into the community so who of you has the authority to lay hands on the sick and see them recover all of you all of you Jesus hasn't just given authority to Simon or, you know, anyone that stands at the front. All of you have been given that authority. You know, you know hear me here. I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't bother coming to church. It's really important that we continue uh, coming 
to church, Jesus spent a lot of his time in the synagogue or, or the temple. Again, I, I, I read through, I've been I'm reading through Matthew and just seeing you know, where Jesus, what the balance was for Jesus. And there's other scriptures that talk about when Jesus was uh, in the synagogue, Matthew 13, 54, Matthew 21 to 24, there's a whole lot of teaching there that, that Jesus did um, within that context. But as well as, as um, those that I've already mentioned, Jesus spent time there, but, but coming to church is a, for a different purpose for us. It's, it's not a social club, is it, Noel? We were having this conversation last week. It's not a social club. It's not a place that you come so that you can feel better. Although, obviously, you know, we are here for that when, when things have, and we know life can get really tough sometimes. And that's when you need to be among people that are going to encourage you and build you up. You know, we're here to pray for you as well and, and encourage each other. But actually, church is about coming and being connected in so that you're powered up to go out again. You know, I had this, this picture of, you know, like a, like a multi-plug thing where we all come and we all plug ourselves in and you know just get that surge of energy again you recharge our batteries so that we can go where it's not so that we can stay here and wait until next sunday when we get another boost we come to church so that we can be charged up, ready to go out in the community in the same way that Jesus did. And Jesus did the same. You know, often we, we read of how Jesus would, he would withdraw to spend time uh, with the Father and pray. You know, we know that Jesus fasted. We know, you know, that he, he went to the temple. We know those things. So we need to do those things as well. But our purpose on a Sunday morning is not for a nice little bless me up. The purpose is to be charged up, ready to go out into the community again. So this brings me to my second point. One of the scriptures that Lisa brought last week, and thank you, Lisa, because it inspired me for this week. Acts 1.8, you know, really, really well known. Acts 1 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I, I heard someone say one time that really helped me to understand this. They were saying, or you could say, uh, the Holy Spirit will be come upon you, you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere where I live in my town. So for me, in Hawkwell, in Essex, in England and to the rest of the world. In fact, everywhere you go, whether you like it or not, when you're a disciple of Jesus, you will be his witness. Now the question is, are you being a good witness? <laughs> but you will be his witness. You're a disciple of Jesus. So everywhere you go, every, every place uh, you, you set foot into, you will be his witness. Did Jesus really say? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody, anybody got a little bit of doubt that Jesus didn't really say this? Good. Jesus really did say this. I'm not preaching what I don't need to practice. You know, this word is for all of us that claim to be disciples of Jesus. So what does, what does that look like then? Now, I, yeah, I have to admit, there have been times when I've, I've cringed. You know, you walk down the high street and there's somebody standing, shouting the gospel to people. And there's been times when I've been, oh, that's really not good witness, that really. 
but at least they're doing something. At least they're standing out in the community proclaiming the gospel. You know, we know that words are powerful. So I don't believe that anything is wasted. But it doesn't have to look like that. I'm not I'm not saying that all of us, you know, next Saturday need to be standing like the length of South End, um, preaching in that way, because God uses us in different ways to, to meet different needs for people. But it, it might look like joining the gym with your neighbour and just spending time getting to know your neighbour, you know, doing, doing life with them. It might look like helping somebody in the community that's got a need. You know, we know that there are many, many needs within the community at the moment. It might just be saying, how, how can I help with that? You know, or I don't know, we, we, when uh, we used to be part of Emmanuel Church in Hawkwell and there was a lady there that she was just incredible. She's, she's still there, but she, she, I remember her coming to the youth group with us once, her name's Shirley. And uh, I said, come, come and talk to our young people. And she was like, but I've got nothing to say to them. Like, I'm really old. And I was like, no, Shirley, come, just come and tell them how God uses you. So she came and she told this story that um, one day God told her to make an apple pie. So she made an, an apple pie and then she was like, okay, God, what, what do you want me to do with it now? And, and God told her, just, just get on your bike and, and ride around on your bike until you find the, the person that um, you've made the pie for. So she did, she got on a bike and she's just cycling around Hawkwell and came across this person and she just went up and she went, excuse me, dear. She went, God told me to make you an apple pie. <laughs> and they just like looked at her like, what? She went, God told me to make you an apple pie because he, he loves you. And ended up the amount of people, you know, people that, a lot of people that had uh, drug addictions and, um, you know, really uh, difficult situations. She was able to share the love of Jesus by baking them an apple pie. That's, that's Jesus in the community. You know, ev everyone knows, G no, I was gonna say everyone knows, yeah, everyone knows Shirley. And when you meet Shirley, she just oozes Jesus. She's one of those people, you come away and you know that you've been in the presence of God as you've spoken to her, she's incredible. You know, it might look like serving as a, a volunteer in the community you know, just being available. You know, I, I, could, I could link you in with loads of places that are looking for volunteers. You know, it, it, it's not always about going in and preaching at people. It's going in and just being friends with them, just seeing a need and fulfilling it. Or it might be that you are called to serving in a position that has uh, influence like, like Adrian has done. You know, Adrian really feels that God has called him to be part of the council. It's, it's not because he, he didn't have enough to do and was getting a bit bored. So he thought he'd find something else to do. But God really called him to make it, be an influence in this community. Maybe God is calling you to be an influence, whether that's being as a school governor or a, a local council, I'm sure Adrian would be more than happy to talk to you, um, or, you know, whatever, but being in positions that have influence and being that influence of Jesus rather than the influence that is not of Jesus. It might be about, you know, offering to walk your neighbour's children home from school when you know that, that you know, their life is hectic. You know, Jesus was practical and compassionate. But it might also look like offering to pray for your neighbour when you know they're sick. It might look like standing out of the crowd. In, in this week's Bible plan, there was a, a phrase in it that I'm going to read to you, and it says... You want to fit in, 
but you were created to stand out. You must understand that you will not be accepted into something that you were sent to influence. This means you will have to be set apart to fulfill your responsibilities as a follower of Jesus. People will notice the difference in you and that's okay. That is God's plan. They will see him in you and want to know more. You know, sometimes we try so hard to blend in, to fit in, to, you know, not, not look a bit odd, but we weren't created for that. We were created to stand out. We were created to be the influence. We were created, um, you know, to, to, to show Jesus love by being his hands and his feet. So the question is, did God really say? And if your answer is yes, then what are you going to do about it? And who needs more of the Holy Spirit this morning? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that's all, that's all I've got to say. My goodness. Kerry's finished early. That's amazing. But I just, you know, I just want to give this opportunity. That's what we're here for this morning. We're here to be connected in, to be powered up so that we can go out into the community, not to stay here in our, in our comfortable building. It's great to be here and I love being with all of you, but that's not the, that's not the purpose of what we're here for. So, you know, if you, if you feel that God has spoken to you in any way, it, I think it'd be good to have a time that we just pray for each other. Let's pray for um, the Holy Spirit to, to fill us up and empower us. Let me just read that, that part in Mark again. So I've got all my pages mixed up. So this is for you. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptised will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Listen to this part. This is for you. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. That's you. They will cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety and if they drink anything poisonous it won't harm them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed.